Now, Mark Larson, a.k.a. Wombat, is one of the most underrated, unknown, great esports competitors maybe ever. I think he might be at the top of the list. If I was making a Hall of Fame, a Lifetime Achievement Award, he actually might be within my top 10, my top 20 names across all games who need to immediately go in first ballot, second ballot. Now, one of the reasons why he's so unknown is because his success was spread out over many years and over many different titles in the FPS genre from team to duel and he became very different player at different points in his career he's someone who funnily enough broke out as a duel player even though he preferred team games he even had a bit of success in counter-strike even though he hated the game his one of his most loved games was return to council wolfenstein he only briefly played that and didn't play it for the full lifespan of the game and because he was trying to be an esports pro he would bounce around the different titles as they became popular as they sort of gained momentum eventually even ended up in cod and he's basically someone where he actually was just able to both adapt to games. I actually think for real, he's like an FPS savant when you hear how many games he was good in. But also, he was very loyal to a certain group of players back in his RDW, Doctors, Team 3D, uh, what they called it towards the end, all those squads, basically. Um... Evil Geniuses at the end. There's a whole bunch of players that were caught and he just brought them along with him and kept playing lands with them and often wouldn't play as much online with them and would just go to the lands. And he was truly a land player from the outset since he was very, very young. And so the interesting thing is he initially was known not as like, oh, who's this one back kid? He was known as Vice's little brother. Now, Vice was an American player from Quake World who played with the team American Gangsters. He was a shit talker and he was a Quake 3 dealer in the early days. So he was coming along. He was bringing his little brother to these tournaments and this guy was able wombat to win titles in quake 3 duel return to castle wolfenstein team version quake 3 team deathmatch and was very competitive in cod at a time before the modern day we're talking in 2008 when actually american teams would have to go to europe and play it like i series in the uk with the european teams so interestingly enough he is someone, I did an interview with him in 2004 for year that I'll link in the description. You have to start right back in 1999, and are you ready for this? He won a tournament in Quake 3 Test. It was the demo version of Quake 3 that the CPL, who were the big tournament, think of ESL, etc. now, they were running the tournaments in America back then in this game to sort of like show that they were going to really blow esports up with the prize money. Because before that, they'd run tournaments in Quake 2, like some people went to. There was the PGL, not the Romanian one, the Professional Gaming League, also in America, that like Thresh used to win famous he didn't go to the CPLs whereas like Wombat and Immortal who did go to the, the PGLs like with Thresh would go to the CPLs and win those it was like the rival tournaments so then when the CPL PGL died off after Quake 2 CPL became it in just quite frankly Western esports it was the main tournament to go to so they held a tournament in Quake 3 test early on in 1999 called Ground Zero believe it or not it was held in New York City in 1999 Ground Zero now, if you don't know, that's what they called the site of the terrorist attacks of 2001 and the 9-11 trade, World Trade Center. That's what they called it when that happened. So this is one of those crazy, like, almost like echoing something, but from the past, reaching forwards into history. So already a weird title in itself. This guy won $10,000 for first place at this tournament, beating Gemini, quite another famous American Quake World player. A lot of Quake World and Quake 2 players were coming into this game to try and earn money early on. And when he won this tournament, he was 15 years old. Some of these guys were already in their 20s, veteran players, played in Quake World, played Quake 2. He was able to win the tournament because Quake 3 test was largely about aim and the best gun at the time wasn't the real or the rocket. It was actually the lightning gun and he had really good aim and his lightning gun was very, very good. So it was a pretty OP weapon and you could hide and run around a little bit, but also it was about out aiming your opponent. There was only one map, essentially what became Tony 2. It was called like Quake 3 test 2 or something at the time. I think one was like the bounce map that became DM-17. Yeah, that was the only map at the time, basically, you could play in duel as far as I remember. Oh, I think they also had like a TDM, which became DM7. But that, again, the point is, this is in duel. And he was just able to sweep the tournament with his aim. But it wasn't like, you know, the same sort of scene we had later. Then they held another tournament in Quake 3 Test called Frag 3. Obviously, they'd held the frag in past ones. And the next one would actually be in TDM. And he came second in that one. Again, he had really good aim. He lost only to the person who won the tournament, Hakeem, the UK dueler from Quake World, who also had a very good lightning gun. And these were really close series, by the way. He could have won. So he got $5,000 for coming in second there. He also had an infamous game that probably skewed how people thought of his playing style at the time because everyone 
everyone thought he just camped and ran because he played an infamous game around the teleporters with Zenon, the legendary Quake World TDM player and quite good 1v1 player who had very good aim. And because he knew this guy had good aim as well, he just played a very safe game where he kept hiding and jumped through the teleporters and drawn out the game until finally I think Zenon just rushed him after 27 minutes and he got the kills and he won the game. He was also, by the way, interestingly in that tournament, able to beat a young Fatality who the next year would go on to be the best Quake player, but with more of a safe control style. And at this time, he was more aggro, go score for crazy rockets, trying to just entertain the fans. The next year, Quake 3 for real came out, and unfortunately, he pretty much dropped off immediately. Like, if you go and look, he didn't do that well at the Razor CPL, lost to some good players. Like, to be fair, no one could know who Power K from Korea was, who ended up finishing third. Um, he went to, like, QuakeCon with all the North American players and played well, beat Revenant, lost to Revenant. That was the guy who became a teammate of his later in some of his teams, like in Return of Castle Wolfenstein. And the Babbage's CPL, the big one, remember, the Razor CPL was won with Fatality. Babbage's CPL was won by 0-4. He lost to a nobody, but then in the lower bracket, also lost to C3 a very good dueler who's probably underrated and forgotten now was extremely good was on the level of 04 and Fatality and CZM etc the next year in 2001 I mean some of his success was online with the Stickmen which was the team he played in in TDM that was a very good team it was always them and Clan Capital CZM and Fatality's teams that were going backwards and forwards for the titles interestingly he already then branched out into Counter-Strike a game like I say he didn't particularly like after 1.5 so actually this is just before that and basically his team are RDW, which had famously destruct, but also some of his other later teammates like uh, Wise Guy and those people like that. They were able to um, play NIP, who won the tournament, and even though they didn't have the lineup with Execute, it was considered the best team of the world after this and one of the, the best teams of all time. They had an epic 10 to 13 cobble game against them where they really took them close in the upper bracket. And then in the lower bracket, they just lost to Weekend Warriors, like a good NA team, 11 13. So actually, this one could have gone much, much better. And there's a world where they beat NIP in this best of one upset and they'd have a much higher placing at the tournament. Now, the next year in 2002, he already started branching out more. He played in like a Belkin Alien versus Predator small tournament. He played in a little invitational Quake 3. That was a Belkin one. Then in Return to Castle Wolfenstein, one of his best games, he went with his team Doctors, which featured some of the aforementioned players that had been in RDW and would be in future teams. They went to QuakeCon, the big tournament of the time, and they won it. It was worth $25,000. They beat Europe's Infensers from Sweden in the final, another legendary Return to Castle Wolfenstein team. After that, though, the team basically dissolved he went back to CS and he even said he regretted not playing since Castle of Wolfenstein because he couldn't know the next year they'd have quick con again and that they'd have another chance to win big money and go against the top top team so he went back to Counter-Strike and other games and in, and in 2002 he played in the Unreal Tournament 2003 CPL at CPL Winter when it had just been released as a game it was a bit dodgy in terms of the PCs he didn't do well he didn't even make the main bracket he finished like 33rd to 48th so it wasn't really relevant in that game and he didn't like that game as far as I know most people thought it was shit actually when it came out especially the old school UT99 players like Destruct etc then he, in CS in 2003 he showed some good results again he finished to finish 7th at CPL Summer which was essentially a world championship at the time or a major we would say they were able to um just basically just lose to the top NA teams of the tournament pretty much at that one. So they could have even potentially gone further there. Remember, he didn't play CS Lords aside from these big tournaments. They had CPL Winter, which is one of the really, really stacked ones. This was the one where some of the NIP players were in SK now. Oh, what do you know? A 10 to 13 loss on Cobble in the upper bracket. This sounds familiar. Like this one, by the way, they also could have won. This was, remember, this was... SK with Heaton and Potty and Spawn, amazing team. But they were able to basically beat the RDW guys of Wombat because they used the save out strat on T side to fuck with your economy and just basically make it like a war of attrition. It made it really hard to win. I think other than that, actually, they would in a heads up game actually potentially have gotten the upset here as well. Then in the lower bracket, they just lost to MIBR who'd been training in LA with like Adrenaline and NOA, the other top teams of the tournament. And this is when they had Kogu who was already becoming one of the best players in the world and was an amazing AWPA. So these aren't even bad results. It shows how good he was on LAN and how good his teams were on LAN and having the core pieces that had a lot of history and experience playing together he even said in, in this time they, they had some of the newer players and you could see them shaking and they were nervous etc now in 2004 
continuing to branch out in all the new games to see if they're any good. They did Doom 3 as a 1v1 tournament at QuakeCon with a weird thing where you got entered like a draw and then you got selected for the main tournament. And obviously, Fatality famously won it. I go for Dela, the Quake 3 jeweler. But in this tournament, he just finished 9th to 12th. He lost to Fatality, who ended up being the best player and you know, had abused like the lights and all that weird stuff because Fatality would always go ham on games when they came out. I think he also had the game two weeks before everyone else or something. I addressed that in my interview with him. I forget what he said about that. He also lost to Clock, who was mainly known, quite frankly, as a Quake 3 CTF player but obviously he must have had skill. I think he was a realer from what I remember. He went in COD now. This is early COD. This is 2004, guys. Like the first Call of Duty or the second or something. This was when it was way more arcade -y. It was a little bit more like a Return to Castle Wolfenstein or a Counter-Strike. And obviously, I think the first COD was also... had like a similar engine more like a Quake than a Counter-Strike. I remember it was a lot more arcade -y. And basically, his team lost to the Complexity team that was pretty good. They beat them as well. And then the final, they lost to United 5, which was the infamous Knight Falls team, if you know, it was a massive trash talker. And they won $10,500 here. He was playing for Team 3D, the team that Counter-Strike had. K Sharp and Rambo and Moto and all those great players. So this was a point in time where people thought, hey, maybe COD's going to really take off. But remember, Duel had always been where the most money for an individual was because the prize purses could be more per person as opposed to having five players, a massive team org to pay your expenses. So in 2005, the CPL World Tour came along. And what was it going to be in Quake 3? Doom 3? No, no. Sadly, it was in Painkiller. A game that was fun to watch, but terrible to play and nobody played outside of these tournaments. But... At the World Tour that had all these stops like Formula One and then a big final, it was actually very competitive in the sense that you would get a bunch of the best Quake duelers ever and even some Unreal Tournament CPM players all trying. Like It was like a cavalcade of who's who of Quake, TDM and dual history playing these. So it was still hard. Now, interestingly, he had very up and down results. Most of the tournaments he never made top eight. Like he was finishing like 70th to 24th, 9th to 12th, 25th, 9th to 12th, 9th to 12th. Then on home soil at CPL in summer in Dallas, Texas, the USA, they had one where he finished sixth place. He was able to lose to Strider, who was a fabulous talent from Sweden. He beat Stellam, who'd even won, I think, the Barcelona one earlier. He was able to beat Zacubus, one of the best UK duelers who's putting in loads of hours. And they eventually just lost the close game to ZYZ, the German player, who was incredibly consistent. He was like a top five placing guy at nearly all the CPL World Tour stops. And in Painkiller, like I say, there wasn't much practice. And so actually, being able to like overcome people who were slightly better than you or had placed better than you, that was pretty tough. It was a pretty consistent game, actually. He went back to 9th to 12th and 17th to 24th and 9th to 12th, but then at CPL World Tour Chile, as we came towards the World Final, he had a 7th place run, he lost to Vu in the upper bracket, the absolute best painkiller player, and then he lost to Sturmy, who on paper was like the 3rd best painkiller player, so as a result, by the way, you can even see, some of these times, he just has a really hard bracket, like that's a tournament there, where if you finish 7th in that case, if you had a slightly different bracket, he might have been 5th or 4th or something, who knows, he went to the World Tour Final, where all the prize money was, and tragically, he finished 7th, but... He had to play Fatality. If you play Fatality, it's death. So there's one tournament life gone. He beat Stellam, a very good player, but he lost to Booms, I think the Italian player who'd beaten himself in a bunch of stops before. That was a bummer because it meant he only came seventh. He got $17,500. So you can see how stacked that tournament became as you went up. If he could have finished fifth or fourth, you were into like, I think fourth was like 100K or something. It was big, big, big money. First place was like half a million dollars or whatever. Then... He had uh, a tournament at the end of the year, CPL Winter, where he played in one of the first Quake 4 tournaments. It was the one, if you remember, won by Cooler over Toxic. That's right, later Toxic owned Cooler for years. But at this one, it was all over him, and a fatality he hadn't started playing yet. He lost to Socrates. Basically, he just had an irrelevant finish here. He tried all the new games out. Sometimes he'd vibe with it, sometimes he wouldn't. He went back to Counter-Strike the next year. He played in CPL Winter, which is basically the last great one in 2006. It was the one that they didn't pay out, so people stopped attending. And his team, Check Six Games, Gaming, which spoiler had NTT by the way that guy was actually a, a developer on Valorant if a riot a wise guy quite a famous Canadian player he played with a bunch of his old teammates from the Doctors and Team 3D and all those squads and basically RDW they lost in the round of 16 to meet your makers not the Polish one the Norwegian one of like element real oops a really, really strong set of players and they could finish second in the tournament so actually we'll never know like could this team have made like Top eight, top four, I can't know that.
I mean, it just shows how insane it is. He keeps going out of the game, accounts and coming back and competing to these lands and making reasonable finishes or coming close to beating the world's best teams. Now, in 2008, just to explain, remember, he won when he was 15 in 1999. In 2008, he was only 24. And this was like the last big year of competition, basically. So he had a really long career at the time in all these different games. And yet, he essentially was able to retire at like a time. You're only like 24. Like, that just shows how crazy it was. So he was going to the European lands. He had second at Nerveland. He played with Evil Geniuses, which had a bunch of his former teammates. And also, by the way, Maven, the guy who became a commentator. Uh, he placed third at I-33. He won the experience. Uh, he came second at I-34. By the way, he was also often playing against um, the team that had Diablo in, if you know Tom P. Newman, the guy who made like the Gucci Academy skit, where it's sort of like a rip-off of... Uh, one of the Grand Poodlesque Hotel for Face It and a bunch of the Flashpoint contents in the skits we did. People might not know he was actually a pro gamer in COD. He finished second at I-35. And by the end of his career, in individual earnings, he had won $55,551. You might think, that's not much. That's not salary. That's prize winnings of his cot. That's actually very legit. Because in the early days, you only win like 10K, 5K. Then in Counter-Strike, you might win 20, 30K, but you've got to split it among five and maybe some to the org. Later in Cord, and all those team games, you've got to split it among five. So actually, this is pretty good money for the, that era of esports. Remember, like 2008 is what we're talking about now. It is so incredibly rare that people are good at that many different FPS games. I know people who weren't good at one version of Counter-Strike than the next. I know people who could play Quake but couldn't play Unreal. I know people who could play Unreal but couldn't play Unreal 2003. I know people who could play Unreal 2003 but couldn't play Doom 3. They could play Quake 3 but they weren't that good at Return to Castle Wolfenstein. Never mind fucking COD and Counter-Strike. And oh, The list goes at Doom 3, Quake 4. The, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. And that shows not only, I think, was he a savant at games and had naturally good mechanics and aim but he also had a very good mentality for like improving when to compete how to compete he was a good land player he didn't get nervous he was someone like I say who was a good teammate stuck with certain people loyally he was even one of the ones as far as I know didn't really want DKT destruct kicked even though he could be a bit of a diva because he was a fabulous player in 1v1 I think actually that's because he was just one of the guys who was just like, look, he's a good player, he's a good land player, he's a winner. let's just play with him. Like, it's the others that sort of got pissed off with his attitude or had beef with him or whatever. There are so many players could not do what this guy did. I'm always impressed that Fatality did it was a champion. This is also very impressive for the breadth and the length of time. Where I come from in England, people will often say, oh yeah, you and whose army? Well, I'll tell you what, I've got my own army backing me up. They're called the Skrilluminati. Thank you to Ahmed Haju. Joseph Adcock, Matt Pognaccio Racula, Theogeny, Animosity, Bot Pounder 420, Jensen Gore, Tobias Berners-Gordy, Tosh, Toucan, and as always, you know it, a special thanks goes out to my boy Jerky's Minion. Do you want to suggest a topic or a guest for my content? Do you want teasers? Find out who's in the upcoming interviews. Do you want to ask me a question in my monthly AMA? Maybe you want to be part of those long discussions where we talk about anything and everything in esports. Well, if so, put your money where your mouth is and enlist today in the Skrilluminati via the Patreon link in the box below.